in this video, we are going to look at how buffer solutions work to prevent dramatic pH changes in a solution. So picture a solution that has both a weak acid, acetic acid, and it's time to get baked. So we've got a buffer solution and we add some sodium hydroxide. That sodium hydroxide is going to pick the acid to react with, and we'll have a neutralization reaction. That acid will neutralize the sodium hydroxide. Or if we look at adding hydrochloric acid, it's going to react with the base. So buffer solutions have both an acid and a base um, available to neutralize. So no matter what we add, there's something there to neutralize it. Let's see. So when we talk about neutralization reactions, um, in 301, 302, we talked about acid plus base goes to salt and water. And, and that's a great reaction, works really well for a lot of our typical acids and bases. These may look a little different. Let's think about that last one. If we had hydrochloric acid and the base in our buffer was that conjugate, that acetate ion, I know the hydrochloric acid is going to donate a proton. The base is going to accept a proton. So my products here would be the weak acid and that chloride ion that's left over after HCl gives away the proton. Sometimes people will call that the conjugate base, but we know the conjugate of a strong acid is so incredibly weak that it really doesn't act as a, it would be a spectrum ion. Okay, so two ways we use neutralization reactions with buffers. One is that we can actually use neutralization reactions to create the buffer solution. And then secondly, what we were just talking about, the buffers work because they contain both an acid and a conjugate base. If we think about, let's think about our weak acid equilibrium. If I have a weak acid reacting with water, It gives away its proton, I get the conjugate base, and hydronium. So we have that equilibrium going on. And now let's say that we find a different color in here. Let's say that we added a bunch of base and it used up a lot of our acid in a separate reaction, right? A neutralization reaction, that base reacted and used up a bunch of it. Think about what happens to our equilibrium as the amount of that goes down. The shelton Lee principle says our equilibrium will shift this way to try to fill that hole. And so in doing so, because we have this equilibrium, even as part of the weak acid or the weak base gets used up, the equilibrium shifts to try to replenish it and rebalance. And so the, the buffer lasts longer than it seems like it should. Okay, so let's talk about using neutralization reactions to create a buffer. So you create a buffer by reacting 600 milliliters of 0 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide, strong base, with 400 milliliters formic acid. So here would be our acidic hydrogen, carboxylic acid. I'm gonna, oh, that was what, 0.3 molar. And I'm just gonna write it in the That's easier. And we wanna know the pH of the buffer. So to know the pH of the buffer, so here we go. I'm going to have to figure out how much of each of those I have. I'm going to have given the pKa. All right, y'all remember our rice tables? So if I thought about this reaction, so I start with only the weak acid, but I'm going to neutralize some of it. So let's write that equation. I have my weak acid. It is reacting with the sodium hydroxide. You can either use the whole molecule, or you could say, hey, I know sodium is really going to be a spectator. I'm just going to put the hydroxide in there. I know the hydrogen from the acid and the hydroxides will combine to form water. Oh, liquid. 
And I know that the sodium ion will have a positive charge and will be attracted to that um, anion, the conjugate base. And so every time I react one of these, right, one of our weak acids, I make one of the conjugate base. And so over time, we start building up our bucket. Okay, rice table. If we want to know specifically how much of our conjugate base and how much of our acid we have, we got to know what we started with. So 0.4 liters times 0.3 molar, I have 0 0.12 moles right here. 0.6 times 0.1, I have 0 0.06 moles. And in this case, I'm not starting with any of my conjugates. But I know um, neutralization reactions, I expect it to go to completion. So minus 0.06, it's a limiting reactant. It's 0.06, how excited to be talking to this. Um, it is very useful. All right, so when you look at this, in this particular case, we have exactly half and half, right? So I could come up here, because it's a ratio in the same, I can actually just plug in my moles. I don't have to convert back to molarity because of the ratio. Or I could just say, wow, when I have equal amounts, I know for a buck when I have equal amounts that the pH equals the pKa. So this would be my pH. All right, so that's making a buffer using neutralization reaction. Let's think about a buffer solution and then what happens when we add a base to the buffer solution. Calculating the pH when we take a buffer and add a base. This is a one-to-one -one, um, acetic acid acetate buffer. We know that when we have equal amounts of the acid and conjugate base, the pH will equal the pKa. So there, done. Now I'm going to run a reaction. And I know I've got 800 milliliters of a solution that's one molar in the acid, one molar in the conjugate base. And I'm adding sodium hydroxide. So the first thing I got to think is, huh, which one will it react with? Well, it'll react with the acid. Write it just like this. Well, that's our acetic acid. The sodium hydroxide will react with that. And as those two react, we're going to make water. And we'll have sodium ion and the conjugate, the acetate ion in this case. And I've got to know my starting amount. Well, 0.1 times 2. So I've got 0.2 moles of sodium hydroxide. 0.8 times 1, I've got 0.8 moles. And now, because I'm starting with a buffer, I've got 0.8 moles of that acetate ion. That's really the only part we care about. Limiting reactant. 0.2 is my limit for the reactant, plus 0.2. Now at equilibrium, I've got 0.6 moles, none, and I've got one. Looking at this, thinking about Henderson Hasselbach, which equals pKa, so 0.75, plus log of the base over the acid. And I know this is one, and I know this is 0.6. So first of all, you should be able to predict, wow, that ratio is more than one. The log is going to be a positive value. The pH should be higher than the pKa. Makes sense. We have more of the base. Bases have higher pH. When I work for this, I got 4.97. So give that a try. Okay, so then one more thing we want to look at. You have 200 milliliters of this specific buffer. And this time, we're not told how much of the acid and the base virgin. All we're told is that it is 0.3 molar. So remember from the end of the last video, we said that the 0.3 molar would be the sum total of the concentration of the acid plus the conjugate base. It's the total number of those molecules, whether they're in the protonated or deprotonated we're going to add some sodium hydroxide. So we know that sodium hydroxide is going to react with some of this, but before we can actually, we can write them. Actually, let's do that. 
we got sodium hydroxide reacting with our weak acid. It's giving us our conjugate base. Remember, the sodium is really a spectator. Water. We know that initially I've got five milliliters of one molar for the um, sodium hydroxide, so 0 0.005 moles. I don't know how much HRI. Well, if I think about this, 200 milliliters, 0.2 liters times 0.3 molar tells me that I have 0 0.06, did I do that right? Yep, moles total. And importantly, what pH at the pKa. And because that's true, we know that we have to have equal amounts. So I must have 0 0.03 moles HA, 0.03 moles HA. Now I can plug in 0 0.03 moles, 0 0.03 moles. Change. This is limiting. When this reaction's done, I have 0.025 moles of the acid, 0.035 moles of the conjugate base. So now if I plug in pH equals the pKa plus log, and it's the base, 0.035 over the acid. Is that right? Yep. So more than one, so our pH should be higher. That makes sense. We have more of the base. Oh, and I didn't actually work that number out, but you all can plug that into your calculator and solve that. You should get a value above 8.3. Okay, real quick, buffer capacity. Let's say you made this solution, one molar uh, acetic acid to 3.24 molar sodium acetate. So you're gonna have a pH above the pKa. We've got more of the conjugate base. Your lab mate needs the same ratio, but with much lower concentrations. Do they have the same pH? Yes. You could convince yourself of that by plugging into henderson Hasselbach. The ratio is the same, so the pH will be the same. But this one has a much larger buffer capacity. These concentrations are really low, so it won't take a whole lot of acid or base you blow through all of the weak acid or weak base in your buffer, and then you'll no longer have a buffer. As we're choosing buffers, there's two things we're going to keep take into account. One, you've got to choose a buffer that's not going to react with the compounds, with whatever reaction, whatever system you need to buffer. You don't want your buffer to interfere with it. So we got to pay attention to that. And then we need a mix of the weak acid and weak base. And that only happens right near the pKa. So we need to be within about one pH unit. We can be you know, a pH unit below or a pH unit above the pKa. Beyond that, we've got so much more of either the acid or base version that's not really above. All right, that was it. Our review of buffers.